ship crewman. What was the creepiest experience you had out on the ocean? We did a man overboard drill on the way to Hawaii which includes throwing a dummy into the water. I went portside to see the experience in less than one minute, and by the time I reached the water there was already a 8 foot shark waiting near the dummy. Not creepy but gross. I was chumming and cutting bait at 5am on Jeffrey's Ledge in New England. I kept hearing weird splashing sounds every few minutes but it was still dark. I was a noob at the time. Around 530 I could see a little better but not great. I think I kept seeing a boy looking like a giant road cone popping up out of the water then it would disappear again. I was full on WTF. Captain comes out on deck and catches me staring off into the sea. He looks out. The road cone pops up a few hundred yards off. He looks back at me and starts laughing his butt off. How long you been watching that whale master bait? Humpback whales master bait by rolling around on the surface of the water using the splash as friction. TL. DR. I watched a whale jerk off for one stroke to an hour. Honestly this is the best story here. Found a sailboat adrift after a storm in the Atlantic with nobody aboard. We decided to tow it to Florida. A couple of us went aboard to attach the line. There was a foot of water and tons of bondage pee floating around in it. Never found out who the owner was. Reported it in Key West and left it in the harbor. Came upon an empty life raft in the middle of the Atlantic. In all likelihood it was probably an accidental discharge. Maybe a crew member was freaking around with the release or something. Who knows. The implications otherwise are very disturbing though. Did a ship go down with all hands without anyone making it to the raft? Was the raft abandoned for some reason? It left me feeling vaguely disturbed for a while afterwards. Free raft. This was over 30 years ago we were living aboard a 22 feet a day our first boat. We pulled into a dock and were trying to sleep. We heard the crackling sound. Almost like twigs burning. Was very concerning. I was trying to figure out what was wrong with my boat. Our neighbor didn't help. He said it was fiberglass worms. Apparently, this is some mollusk that attaches itself to the hull and clicks in some way that the hull picked up and amplified. That would be a sheep head. Convict fish. Eating barnacles off your hull. Freaked me out the first time I heard it. All those crunching noises. Worked for a bit as a deckhand on fishing boats out of San Diego. A few times we would come across deserted smaller boats. Pangas. Drifting with outlandishly big motors. Every time the captain would just cut hard port or starboard to get away from them as quick as possible. I knew they were drug running boats that had probably dropped off their cargo. But I would check them out with the binoculars if we were close. One had two people on it. Both had clearly been shot a bunch of times. And one was moving and fairly alive. I told the captain. Got a disapproving head shake and we were on our way. My dad told me this story once. He spent a year fishing off the coast of Alaska. One night he and another boat were racing to get the last slip. The other would have to moor in the harbor for the night. That night there was a storm and the fish in the bottom of the boat moored in the harbor all slid to one side and capsized the boat. My dad woke up the next morning to find the entire boat's crew had drowned in their sleep. Comma had drowned in their sleep. I'm sure they were awake when it happened. Deep fog. Like I couldn't see the front of the yacht. Sailing. And it was only 50 foot. The real creepy part came from the radar system tracking the boats and ships around us. Our radar, not being a commercial shipping or fisherman spec, was not quite as accurate so sometimes boats would disappear, be right on top of us, or appear in sight but not on radar. That, on top of the sheer quantity of marine debris throughout the ocean, made me really scared that some boats had sunk when they dropped off radar. Especially in the months after Fukushima. The situation was terrible in the Pacific. The number of boats adrift and lost was among, if not the highest it ever was in the history of mankind. The doldrums. You spend a year or two at sea watching the waves and winds are blowing constantly and then one day they stop. Not so much as a wisp of wind in the sea is like glass. It feels as if time has stopped. Realizing how creepy it feels, the captain calls for an all stop and goes dead in the water. Like a horror movie, everyone migrates topside and just stares to the horizon. No one says a word and you can hear yourself breathe. He lets the ship rest there for an hour and the sailors freak out. Panic can set in quickly with a green crew. The only thing the captain says when we get underway is men. This is the doldrums. Bastard knew what he was doing. 
Not a ship, but, you know in the movies the creaking sounds on a submarine from the pressure when going deep, the first time you hear them for real is a bit unnerving. I've not spent much time at sea compared to men who should post their stories but you're right, the creaking, especially at night is unnerving to start with. I've spent about 9 years out at sea and there were a couple of things that stuck with me. The very worst was a colleague hanging himself overboard on purpose, going next to a tornado off the coast of Taiwan and the massive waves around us, hearing a PA from the captain to pick up a heavy tool and head onto the back of the ship next to the handrail and it was not a drill. Turned out a ship that went past us in the opposite direction changed direction and started following us. Nothing came out of it. The very last one I remember was hearing a splash and start looking overboard to spot what fell in the water only to realize it's dolphins playing. I got to see glowing algae on top of the ocean in the middle of the night, having a smoke on the upper decks after my watch on a warship, surreal and extremely uncommon but a memory I'll have for the rest of my life. One of my most magical experiences at sea was seeing a school of flying fish skim over by a luminescent sea. That was... Can't even describe it. I hope I'll remember that for the rest of my life. Was on a fishing trip off the coast of Oregon. This was about a year after the big tsunami in Japan. The captain saw something off in the distance, so we went to look. It was a small refrigerator with Japanese writing on it. Just creepy to know that probably washed out of someone's apartment. Cousin is a ship captain or something. One time they were loading cargo from Bandar Abbas Bay in Iran to transport to Abu Dhabi in the UAE. A cat had climbed on board without anyone noticing. Halfway through the Persian Gulf she began meowing like crazy and they all legit got spooked. Some started saying ghosts or thinking they were legit sailing in haunted waters. After 3 hours of shipmates searching like crazy they finally found her hiding between cargo containers. They dropped her off in Abu Dhabi as an illegal immigrant. Comma they dropped her off in Abu Dhabi as an illegal immigrant. Garfield's plot against Nermal finally came to fruition. 1. First day on my first ship ever. It's winter and like 30 degrees and the steel bulkheads racks, beds, etc are cold. Shipmate is nice enough to give me a small electric alarm clock to use the next morning. I climb in my rack and put the alarm over my head kinda under the pillow and crash. 2 am I wake up after feeling something weird. Something just ran across my boot camp shaved head. I open my eyes and stare into the darkness. Then something else runs across my head. I turn on my overhead light in my rack and about two dozen roaches run for their lives. They were nesting on my alarm clock and my head to keep warm. Yes, this was a new guy joke. Yes, I used it later on someone else. Number. It was almost 30 years ago and I haven't forgotten. I still feel them sometimes. 2. Same ship, out at sea, took a shortcut through the civilians berthing, bedrooms, area, about 15 of them were sitting around a TV watching animal pee, some were laughing but others were too focused, those others, 3, another ship, out at sea, when emergencies happen it doesn't matter who you are sometimes you have to get dirty, and line ruptured and flooded several spaces with pitch black oil, about neck high, on top of that we were sure there were a few bodies in there, me and a buddy had to climb into the oil pool and wade through two rooms to get the pumps placed and confirm other things, power is cut off of course so we had nothing but flashlights, yes, we found one of the bodies, the other guy was actually elsewhere napping on the job, probably saved his own life, there's plenty more but those are the first three. We had a naval chief petty officer die of a heart attack while underway on board our sub. Since we were doing spec ops off the USSR coastline, we could not surface and come off station for 60 days. So, every time we had to go into the freezer to get food, there was the chief laying on the shelf with his eyes wide open and frozen. He was wrapped in a cling wrap material so you could see his face clearly. So, next time you open your freezer at night, just think of having to look at someone's face looking back at you. I can't believe the body wasn't at least put in a body bag. Woke up at 3am to a search and rescue alarm. Former coasty, I book it to the boat, we launch and end up cruising along for a few hours. Everything is pitch black. One of the crew members are looking over the side at the bioluminescent algae being kicked up by our wake and says he saw something big roll over in our wake. 
We explain it if that it was probably a shark and about 15 minutes later a deep fog sets in. The fog is reflecting our running lights so it looks like we are in a hallway or tunnel. Everyone gets a little more tense. We start keeping a close eye on the GPS, and then the photometer alarm goes off. We are in 5 feet of ocean. The alarm stops. We are in 300 feet, and then 3, and then 250, and then 6 feet. Something was swimming very close to the bottom of our boat. It was such an eerie experience. We never figured out what it was. Perhaps whales? Or the kraken? We got to the boat we were rescuing and everything else was uneventful. There's something wonderful about being on the ocean in the middle of the night, but things can be very strange too. US Marine here. During a float on a boat to operation. Top secret. Destination. Unknown. One of our own were lost at sea. I guess they just jumped overboard at night or something. Kinda depressing. That's a crappy way to die. Anyways. Their coffin rack was adjacent to mine. And we left the rack made. And for some reason. The sheets kept on getting messed up every day. It was pain in the butt to keep making the sheets we stripped the rack. And we figured that no one should be sleeping in there since there were plenty of other vacant racks in the berthing. But someone would keep making the rack, and messing the sheets up in the morning. I know aircraft carriers are big, but could someone really fake their own death on one and get away with it? There's no way someone would be sleeping there, because we'd notice someone climbing up on the top bunk, and the duty would have been posted at the entrances to the berthing. It was just creepy seeing the rack being made neatly and then messed up in the morning. A friend, a captain, asked me to help deliver a sailboat from featuring Lauderdale to Houston. I was a somewhat inexperienced sailor, only sailed for fun a few times, short trips, but he was able to get me $100 a day so I said why not, I was between jobs. It was three of us, me, my captain, who is a very experienced sailor, and the new owner of the ship. Once we got to Anna Maria Island on the west coast of Florida we prepared for the longest haul of our trip. The first time we'll be away from the coast going through the Gulf of Mexico. We did a 4 hour shift, then you'll get to sleep or do whatever for 8 hours until your next 4 hours. The eerie part for me was my shift, alone. Pitch black darkness in the middle of the ocean, no moon out. You also have to avoid a lot small oil rigs, some still active, some not active, some marked with lights, some not, you'd hear explainable sounds etc. I don't know if it was just my head freaking with me, but that one overnight shift was pretty tense and scary for me. But towards the end of my shift we hit some pretty bad rain and rough seas. My captain took over, I went to bed, I get woken up a bit later to crazy rough seas, I go back on deck, and my captain and the owner of the ship just yell, we have to turn back, we lost our GPS. Apparently the wind knocked it off the top of the mast and into the ocean. So there we are now. Rough seas, pitch black and with no GPS. Luckily my captain is old school and knows how to sail with just a chart. So we made it back to Anna Maria and purchased a new GPS. The whole event was just surreal and I was definitely worried a few times. The rest of the trip was uneventful. The next nights had nice bright moons. Calm seas and that made it a little less eerie. This is why you should always have an emergency backup sextant. I was on ship during Hurricane Katrina in the Gulf of Mexico. During the worst of it the wind made the most eeriest noises and the ship was creaking and making all sorts of metal on metal noises a ship shouldn't make. My buddy and I were about 20 miles west of the Lower Keys, in the Gulf of Mexico. We were on his Bertram looking for Dolphin and Wahoo when we see a boat in the distance heading our direction. We weren't under power or anything, just drifting and drinking beer. The boat gets closer and we see smoke. It was pretty much a burned out cabin at that point, but still running. It just idled by. We yank our lines up and go run it down. Luckily no charred corpses that I could see. I kick it into neutral with a gaff and we decided to see where it came from. On the way we reported its location to Coast Guard. We drove that general direction for probably 10 miles. Didn't see a single thing. No other boats. No life jackets. Nothing. Hopefully the people who were on that boat were picked up safety. It was like something from Walking Dead. Just a burned out boat floating on by. Not ship crew, but one of three guys sailing a 45 foot Morgan from Antigua to Daytona Beach. 
Florida. I had zero crossing experience prior to this trip. Anywho, I pictured getting tan, pina coladas and white sand beaches. Nope, it was open ocean, at least by landlubber standards, and 3 hour shifts round the clock banging the helm, GPS and radar while the other two guys chilled during the day or slept at night. It was hard as heck, and I've done a few things considered somewhat tough and out of the ordinary. But the biggest worry while on autopilot are the bazillions of ships flying around throughout the Caribbean. Yes, you can see them from many miles away, especially at night and with the help of radar, but they sneak up on you. And a 600 foot freighter captained by a possibly hammered crewman in the wheelhouse at 2 in the morning wouldn't even feel a bump as it split us into kindling. So, one night I'm on shift, trying to stay awake with Snickers and coffee, and it's so black you couldn't discern the horizon line. Just stars, blackness and the running lights of lots of far off freighters going in all directions. I proceed to take my occasional 360 degree glance around like I was told to make sure there's also nothing coming up aft, and omf gourd. There's this giant round yellow light stretching what seemed like across the entire sky directly behind me. Clearly, this was a freighter directly behind our boat with some kind of a spotlight on the bow trained on us and about to gobble us up like Jonah. The rush of terror was so great, I couldn't even stomp on the deck to waken my mates let alone scream for help. So, I just accepted my impending death and wondered if it would be the impact or drowning that killed me first. Then I focused a little harder and realized it wasn't a ship at all. It was a full moon rising. I can't describe the immediate relief. It was like awaking from the most terrifying dream you've ever had and realizing. Holy smokes. I'm not running from Freddy Krueger. I'm in my bed. Sailing a crossing like that I learned is hours and hours and sometimes days and days of endless boredom punctuated with short periods of deaf and ten. Deaf can 1 is the highest alert level, with the greater the number, the lower the guard. Not my story but my grad advisor. He is a sailor and after getting into grad school, he took a year off to sail the world. He was in one of the last long legs, South Africa to Brazil. He accidentally turns off the auto nav thinking it was the stove. He was also the cook. Thinking oh crap he quickly turns it back on and fries it. The following is a good 3 weeks of not knowing whether the captain or the only other sailor will go nuts and kill him in his sleep for freaking up. He bailed in Brazil and took a plane home. I worked on a cruise ship going from UK to Spain and back. Cross channel ferry really but quite big at 37,000 tons, 2,500 passengers. We had a turnaround of about 4 hours in Bulboa and at this time I worked in the restaurant and after we had cleaned up they started hailing a passenger over the loudspeakers to disembark. I remember he had a slightly comical name like Passenger Peckham or Passenger Pickles or something. Then the managers came and told us to start searching our stations for him. Every bit of the ship was getting searched, and they kept hailing him and us searching right up until the outbound passengers started embarking. They even had us searching in little cupboards and in the fridges etc. Obviously Passenger Pickles had jumped off in the night into the cold Atlantic. So another time we were heading off at night during the winter gales and about 5 hours offshore around midnight I finished my shift and headed off to a crafty little platform at the stern where I could toke my nightly reefer in peace and I saw the massive bright ship spotlight scanning slowly and methodically back and forth across the waves. I guessed this was for a jumper and sitting there slightly baked I could imagine perhaps glimpsing a last sight of some poor doomed soul struggling in the chop and wake before disappearing off into the vast black expanse of the Atlantic. An office later confirmed the spotlights at night were for someone who had apparently jumped off a ship that had passed in the opposite direction. Had a friend go out night diving in Wellington Harbor, turned around in the water and saw monstrous great white swimming straight toward him, turned his flash off, for some reason. Found a wrecked up yacht off the coast of Bermuda with one dead man and one half drunk and injured man. We thought no one was alive until the one guy screeched at us. I don't know if this was creepy exactly, but it sure scared us. Up by Alaska in rough seas. Our office was below the waterline. On the outside of the ship, right below a sponson, there was a full size eye beam running around the outside edge of the office. It was probably 10 inches wide and we used it as a shelf, storing full size binders on it. One day in rough weather six of us were in the office. Three officers, three enlisted, when we heard an enormous bang. 
so loud that our ears rang and all of us jumped out of our seats. After checking to make sure we weren't taking on water, and calling damage control, we started looking around to determine what could have caused it. We couldn't find anything, nothing had come loose, nothing had fallen, the dry tank below the office was still dry, etc. We eventually noticed that the I-beam had cracked, not a hairline fracture, not a little split, but the entire beam had separated lengthwise by about 5 millimeters. We took a wave up under the sponson with so much energy that it bowed in the hull of the ship and split the beam. But the beam didn't ever go back to the original length. The crack was also precise and even. You could slide a pencil in the gap all the way back to the bulkhead. In fact, the split was so wide they couldn't weld it directly closed. They had to cut a 5mm shim to fill the gap. It was amazing. And we had hundreds of people come through the office for the next couple of weeks to see it. A couple of people tried to calculate the energy needed to instantly separate the I-beam that was 4 feet away from where we were sitting but it was too scary to contemplate. That's my creepy story. Hope you enjoyed. I go to a maritime school for the specific reason to be a pirate. Joke. I had our first time at sea and I was told during my deck watch to take the helm. It was a clear day but choppy waters. After I took the helm, as a freshman and first time on a boat at all, there were huge re waves for us being on a 540 foot cargo ship, which was refitted to be a training ship, added more holes for people to sleep in. So when I was on the helm I see that the whole ship in front of me and the water in front of the ship. We would hit the, the swell so that at one point you saw nothing but the bow and the blue sky, and the next moment you see nothing but the water and the bow, and in between the horizon would quickly pass by. After that I change my major to engineer. No wonder all those deckies are unbelievably stressed out, and huge buttholes for possibly the same reason. Halfway through an 8 month deployment we found ourselves in a dense fog in the middle of calm seas. The way the fog was sitting made it look like a soft white sand beach was about 30 feet away from the ship. I had such a strong urge to jump off the ship and swim to that little white sand beach that I had to force myself to go below deck. I knew, deep down, that there was no beach, but my eyes and brain were telling me that was what I was looking at, and the piece I imagined sitting on that little beach was incredibly tempting. The sirens almost got you. I'm not a ship crewman. A buddy of mine is sailing the world and told a story about being adrift on glass smooth seas one evening. He could have turned on his outboard motor but, he was in no rush and fuel can get expensive so, he decided that he'd just wait for wind to eventually come back. So, moonless night, no wind, no waves, but there's a strange mechanical noise out in the ocean. There's no light so, he can't determine what it is and, his flashlight is completely useless. He considers that sound can travel a long long way over a glass smooth ocean so, he's not certain how far away this noise is. He starts considering that maybe it's a submarine and he wonders to himself if submarines ever surface under other boats. So, the day after he tells this story, I go to work. I worked with Navy at the time so, I retell his tale and ask, do submarines ever run into other boats out at sea? Oh, yeah, happens all the freaking time. Just google submarine collision. It seldom means good things for the boat that got hit. Other people are joining the conversation to point out that, all of those collisions you'll read about, keep one thing in mind, they were all under power. They were making noise and we still just drove right through them. A sailboat, a drift, PFFT, and, the ascent folk chiming in to mention that the transition between underwater and the surface is really freaking noisy so, it's not like you can tell if something is right above you until it's really too late, anyway. So, I told my buddy and sent him a link to the wikipedia article about all these events. It didn't make him feel any better. Not me but my chief engineer always recalls a story of when Arab died while cleaning a cargo tank due to the fumes. He said having lunch with him a few minutes prior to everyone running G out on deck to see what the emergency was to only make it there as his lifeless body was dragged out the manhole was the eeriest feeling ever. They were well offshore as well so their only option was to store his body in one of the walk-in coolers. They just wrapped his body in a bedsheet and plopped him down on the floor of it no different than if he were the rack of ribbies they had thawing out made getting your milk in the morning for your cereal very difficult. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.